everyone, this is Leonard Lee, Executive Analyst at NextCurve, and I'm here with... Joe Peterson, Chief Analyst at ClearTech Research. Yes, and we are here in Las Vegas for AWS reInvent 2025, and it is going to be the year of... Agentic AI! Oh my gosh. Uh, just hands. Just hands? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm uh, really, really excited to be here with you, and... Uh, we had a wonderful dinner last night. We did. Right? Yeah, thank you for recommending the sushi at restaurant with a uh, really funky chef <laughs> who decided Tamago was a chef's choice. So, oh. The things you learn in Vegas. Yeah, well, you know, this year's event is going to be all about Tamago. Right? Really? Nigiri. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. But hey, what, what, do you, what are you expecting this year other than... So let's unpack Agentic AI for a moment. What, what, what are you expecting that AWS is going to announce or share with the 200 and some odd analysts right. from around the globe yeah. that are here this year? Which is like, I think, a record maybe, right? It is a record. And... You know, I expect overall that the conference is going to be quite large. I'd read somewhere that there's going to be 60,000 visitors for reInvent this year. So kind of crazy. And it's across, what, four or five different hotels? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty insane. Yeah. Insane. But they have us here at the Wynn, and we're getting a little bit of a taste of our agenda to come. And I think it is, we're going to talk a lot about agentic AI. And we're going to talk about use cases for agentic AI, and we're going to talk about maybe the idea of super agents mm -hmm. and how super agents are going to evolve. Okay. Um, uh, you know, and, and we're starting to see, at least from a consumer side of the equation, companies announce super agents, but more, and at least I think of a super agent as a personal assistant. So we're seeing okay. them on the consumer side again, where consumer, these, these super agents are going to learn our preferences and say you and your wife want to go on a trip to Italy. Well, they're going to learn based upon your preferences that you, Leonard Lee, like to stay in five star hotels. Yeah. Perhaps. And they're going to book gondola rides because they know that you want to romance your wife while you're in Venice. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. But yeah. we're way off track yeah. here. So that's. No, no, no we're not. Well, I, I was going to ask you, um, what the hell is a super agent? It's, it's, it's so your So you're assistant. answering that. Yeah. yeah. No, that's wonderful. And so the things that pop into my mind as you went through that uh, description was privacy and hyper personalization, but personalization that is closed loop because you're actually, you're actually having the agent act on your behalf. Right either based on intent or some perception of intent or just a prediction. Right. right. But I start to think about all the ways from a security perspective, even the consumer side of the equation yeah. could go haywire, right? Oh, yeah. Because the that super agent assumes your identity and it yeah. takes on your proxy. permissions. It's a proxy. Yeah. And it takes on your permissions. So what if it goes rogue? back to yeah. the jazz hands and says, well, gee, I'd like to book, I'd like to approve a $10,000 charge to my American Express to go to a five-star hotel in Venice, right? Yeah. yeah. But you personally aren't even aware that it's doing that, but yet you are liable for that expense. Yeah. Maybe that's just a crazy, you know, notion in my head, but I start to think about permissions and that acting as a proxy. And, yeah. and where are those lines? And we're not hearing about any of that. Maybe it's just too new. Yeah. But that's what's happening on the consumer side. It's not happening yet on the enterprise side. But I think the ambition is there. And quite frankly, I'm not quite sure they've cracked the code on that for the consumer either. I mean, yes, you have personalization engines that are driving you know, the delivery or, you know, let's say ads is right. the most common thing. Um, but I think you're using much more deterministic um, agents, you know, RPA-ish kind of stuff. Right. Like, you know, uh, for instance, on Apple, you have um, uh, shortcuts, things that uh, are more like triggers that you're attaching to specific events 
it, it, this is old school stuff, right? But it's a consumer that can now do that within the context of their their um, device in this case, which yeah. might be an iPhone or an Android phone of whatever variety. Right. Uh, on the enterprise, we're looking at um, something much more complex, I think, yep. in terms of an agent. It not that is a proxy of you, but they're more of like um, like little worker bees, right? Mm -hmm. That you're creating to uh, basically take on tasks that might be part of a workflow or a process or even a function. What are the possibilities there in terms of what you're, you articulated earlier about things going haywire yeah. happening? And so I think, the important thing here is that we're seeing a lot of vendors uh, start to put together all these frameworks, the agentic frameworks, to try to actually, actually take away agencies from these agents. You know, my advice to business units spinning this up outside the purview of their security teams is stop. Get them involved. Because... Ooh, identity is going to become the new black in agentic yeah. AI, yeah. right? Um, and what I mean by that is maybe your company hasn't installed micro-segmentation yet. Yeah. If they haven't, that's a problem because now there's these agents running around being able to go and do things in systems that maybe the security guys don't know are there. Yeah. You know, maybe... If you're a great big company with a lot of smart engineers and a lot of money, well, you've got those things in place, but yeah. maybe you're a mid-market client yeah. and you've got a director of IT that is wearing the security guy's hat because you don't have a security guy or gal. Um, and your marketing team has gone out and installed some sort of agentic or your HR team has gone out and uh, whichever team, it doesn't matter which team. The point is, you know, be a good citizen of your company and get your IT folks involved in what it is you're installing or putting in, right? Yeah, yeah. So th that's one of the things that you can do tangibly as a, as a worker and a good citizen of a company. Don't create shadow AI. Everyone is still on a learning curve, even the vendors. Sure. And, so, and this might be one of the issues. And, uh, but... Um, you know, taking whatever kind of lessons learned that they do have that can be productized. And I know that a lot of them are, are doing it and yep. trying to do it. Um, but also recognizing fundamentally what the limitations of these technologies are, right? I mean, there's a lot of shoehorning going on. You know, there's, they're trying to fit AI into, let's say, a, a solution where AI might not even be part of the solution, mm -hmm. right? You don't need it. But there's this notion, and we hear it everywhere, that AI is going to take over everything, but that may not actually be the case. Maybe the more sensible thing is looking at, you know, what Amazon is um, you know, kind of famous for, is working your way backward from the problem and figuring out what are the technologies that really make sense. Yeah. to solve the problem rather than having this fixation on AI that everyone seems to have, which is overriding almost every single agenda out there. And, you know, no one's talking about cloud anymore. Well, <laughs> it's just I really think, weird. I think what's happening, and you bring up a really good point, and I think we're here to be wowed. We're here to hear about what they're thinking about. We're here to think about innovation, and they want us to be thinking about innovation, right? And that's that's all great. But underneath, you know, as we pull back the layers, yeah. what you said is really important. What I see is a starting, a reimagining of our cloud footprints yeah. and with AI. And how does that new design look? And is it, in fact, more of a containerless environment? Yeah. I think when we, when we start to build out these new solutions or these new footprints, they're going to look very different, both from a network perspective, um, both from a, a, a server perspective. The things that we think about yeah. and have thought about for the past 15 or 18 years in cloud design 
yeah. are being shifted. Yeah, yeah. Right? And you're making a great point because what you're probably looking at is a need for both container-based architectures and serverless, yep. right? And and we are seeing that. But yeah. the tricky thing is um, how the AI technology at the model level continues to shift and how it plays out on top of hardware, yeah. what it implies in terms of virtualization and what you virtualize, how you virtualize it, whether or not it's container-based or microservices-based, or serverless, these are all things that haven't been quite worked out yet, right? And then there's this whole topic of economics. Well, how much does it actually cost to run all this stuff? And is it economical, right? Yeah. Um, in aggregate. And so there's still a lot of open questions. Um, so it'll be interesting. It will I'm, be I'm really interesting. looking forward to what uh, AWS has to say. And I'm sure it's going to um, have reverberations everywhere, right? For sure, so. and we're just at day one. So catch catch back up with me on day yeah. four. Maybe I'll have a different spin yeah, on things. Same here, same here. All right. Well, it's great chatting with you. Thank and you. We're going to have fun. We're going right, to have us will. some fun. So anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you later in probably three days, right? Bye, all. Yeah, bye.